Well, look, we've just started describing the propositional calculus. Let's take an early opportunity to prove something about the calculus, the language of the calculus, as we've just defined it. And in particular, we've said, we've adduced some formation rules according to which any sentence letter, I'll just abbreviate it here to SL, alone is a whiff. My writing again is not so great. And if alpha and beta are whiffs, then these two forms of expressions are whiffs. That's so open parentheses, this reverse L tilted over uh, alpha, close parentheses, and open paren alpha arrow beta are whiffs. Now, on the basis of those three formation rules, it might appear intuitively obvious to you that any whiff is balanced, what we're going to call balanced. And what we mean by balanced is that that whiff contains an equal number, I'll abbreviate number just to that symbol, of left paren, that's opening parentheses, and right parens, parentheses. Now that might appear intuitively obvious, but we're going to take an early opportunity to prove a what we call a meta-theorem, that is a theorem about the theory that we have so far described. And this is our meta-theorem, and we're going to prove it, and we're going to prove it using the principle of mathematical induction. Now, you'll recall in the third video in the f uh, series comprising the first part of this course on logic, we dealt with induction and we demonstrated, I demonstrated, that proof by mathematical induction is one which involves proving something about a countable infinite sequence of objects and we prove that the first object in the sequence has the property, whatever property we want to ascribe, we want to prove to, to um, subsist or to be possessed by each members of the sequence and then we show for if anyone does then the next one does. That's the second part and then on that on the basis of that implication we say well the first one does by this, if one does then the next one does first one does, therefore the next one does, and that one does, therefore the next one does, and so on and so forth. Now, as I recall, I suggested uh, to you at some point during that presentation that this was not the only uh, form of a proof by mathematical induction. This is what we sometimes call a proof by weak induction, weak induction. Uh, but there is something that we call strong induction. Let's write it here, although it shouldn't be too difficult to remember. Strong induction, and sometimes a strong a proof by strong induction is called a course of values. I'm not going to write course and values out in full. I'll brew it. Course of values induction. Let me just describe, because our proof of this meta-theorem up here is going to proceed by a course of values induction. So let me just describe what a course of values induction is and how it works. Now in the case of a weak induction, recall that our inductive hypothesis was that a randomly selected 
element in the sequence had whatever property we wanted to prove was possessed by all elements in the sequence and it was required we were required to show that on that assumption the next object in the sequence does strong induction works slightly differently and for the purposes of a strong induction our inductive hypothesis our assumption is going to be slightly different first of all we're going to order all whiffs into a sequence and we're going to do that according to the number of symbols that appear in the whiff in question so the first whiff in the sequence is going to be that which contains or those which contain the lowest number of symbols and of course there are infinitely many of those because we uh, the lowest number of symbols is in a whiff appearing in a whiff is one and there are a whole variety a whole number a whole range of whiffs that have just one symbol in them all of those uh, one symbol whiffs are going to be first in the sequence all of those with the next uh, number of symbols which will in fact be four symbols will appear here in the second place and so on and so forth placing groups of whiffs in this sequence according to the number n of symbols that appear in them selecting at random the nth object in the sequence we were going to assume that all the objects prior to the nth object have the property in question now the property in question so far as our meta theorem is concerned is that of being balanced in the sense that is described up here so our inductive hypothesis in this case is going to be that all whiffs to the n minus one whiff are balanced and then we are going to be required to show and I'm going to abbreviate that to RTS that on that basis the nth whiff is balanced so that's the way in which we're going to proceed now let's take a look at the intuition behind strong induction it's a little less obvious perhaps than the intuition that I, as I just described it behind weak induction but nevertheless it should be reasonably straightforward to understand now let's assume that the principle of strong induction were not valid and that is to say we're going to assume that despite the fact that all whiffs to some whiff n minus one in the sequence are balanced and that implies that the next succeeding whiff is balanced nevertheless it's the case that some whiff in this sequence somewhere along the line is not balanced well if there's some whiff that's not balanced then there must be a first whiff that is not balanced and if there's a first whiff that's not balanced then all prior whiffs to that unbalanced whiffs are balanced because that unbalanced whiff is the first unbalanced one but we've already shown here that the assumption that all whiffs prior to a particular whiff are balanced implies the balance of the next succeeding whiff so the fact that all prior whiffs are balanced will show the first unbalanced whiff to be balanced and that's a contradiction and so there cannot be a first unbalanced whiff in the sequence and if there isn't a first unbalanced whiff in the sequence then there is no unbalanced whiff in the sequence so that is the principle the intuition as it were motivating a course of values induction now let's apply this course of values induction to the proof of this meta theorem that we have up here now for the purposes of proving a meta theorem using a strong induction we typically proceed by cases and our first case which I'm going to label case one uncontroversially I hope 
is for n equal to 1. So we're dealing here with the first whiff, call it alpha, in the sequence. And we have to show that that is balanced. Well, the first whiff in a sequence of whiffs that we set out here according to the number of symbols that they contain is that that whiff which contains just one symbol. And by our formation rules, the only such whiff that uh, could there could be would be a sentence letter standing alone. So if n is equal to 1, then alpha, this whiff, in this sequence is a sentence letter. I'm going to abbreviate that just to SL, alone, standing alone, and that is balanced. So the first whiff in the sequence is balanced because it has an equal number of left and right hand parentheses, which is to say none at all because it's a sentence letter standing alone. So case two, and here is where we invoke the inductive hypothesis. The inductive hypothesis is that up here we've expressed it all whiffs to the up to and including the nth, n minus one whiff are balanced. Alpha is of the form and it might be of one of two forms. Let's say our first form is either of the form open parenthesis some with beta close parenthesis or a second alternative, it's of the form open parenthesis, some with beta, arrow, some with gamma, close parenthesis. Now let's consider case 2a. Well, of course, this with beta contains fewer symbols than does the with alpha. Specifically, if alpha contains, let's say, m symbols, then beta contains m minus 3 symbols. So beta is balanced by the inductive hypothesis. So by the inductive hypothesis, beta is balanced. But if beta is balanced, then so is alpha, because alpha is of the form open paren, this L on its side, beta, close paren. So it has one additional left-hand parenthesis and one additional right-hand parenthesis, and so you're adding one to the left and one to the right, so it is still balanced. So hence, alpha is balanced. case 2b, where alpha is of the form open paren, beta, arrow, gamma, close paren. Well, again, by the inductive hypothesis, beta and gamma, because they contain, each contain fewer symbols than are contained within this whiff itself, are balanced. And if they are balanced, then of course alpha is balanced by the same reasoning that we adduced here in case 2a. So let's just say again, hence alpha is balanced. Now because Alpha can only be of the form open paren, this L on its side, beta, close paren, or open paren, beta, arrow, gamma, close paren, then we're done.